and welcome. Welcome to the uh, Game Week review of t Game Week 28. Uh, this is my second recording of this very thing because the first one bloody corrupted, didn't it? <laughs> Some IT expert I am. Um, yeah, so what's been going on in the old dream team? Game Week 28 was a bit of a shitter because um, very low scoring. The highest points achieved in the world was 108, which it ain't that good, ain't that high. Average points of 49. Um, so it's no surprise that Edward Jackson has won our uh, game week this week. Um, his team, the mighty uh, Floyd Road Valiants, um, managed a um, above average 60 uh, this week, which was enough to scoop the prize. Um, Ed will be very, very happy, especially due with all this uh, delays with the snow and stuff. Don't know if you heard about that. Um, his hands will be bluer than ever, but his heart will be warmed by the uh, £10 note uh, coming his way via um, Robert Starley World Play World Pay transactions. So, who bloody won him that money? I know you're asking me. Well, it certainly wasn't most of his defence. Um, Lossell, Martina McCutcheon, and me only managed two each, but Otamendi chipped in with five. Good for him. Um, we move on to the midfield because Lingard, Jersey, got six. Uh, Captain Chili Sauce Salah, uh, 20 points. And Gross, Pascal Gross, you look like a bee, got five. Uh, Walcott continues to disappoint with two. Um, and then the standard up front combo of Wilson, Kane, and Firmino did the rest of the business. All added up to 60, rather nice for it, and also his first game week victory, which gives him 10 quid. Lucky old dead. Get around, treat, treat the old girl to something. Well, it did. So well done to him. Um, mad props. Second place this week, again, is Ed Scriver, who is having his fifth second place finish. That's 25 quid straight off the bat, boys. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do in this game. This evening's beer is uh, Estrella, by the way. Thank you for the sponsorship. Who's Ed got represented? Well, um, for starters, he's got Butland in defence. Six. At first glance, you think, no, oh, clean sheet. But wait a second. Stoke conceded. And not only that, Butland scored an own goal. Yes, you're reading the points total right. Butland scored an own goal, but made it up. Bonus points, three. Saves, nine, equals three points. Minutes played, 90. Another two. That's six points for Butland. God knows what would happen if he kept a clean sheet. In the defence, uh, we've got Danilo on six and Ake with four. Um, adding to Ed's slender total. Uh, chili, chili sauce salad with 20. Gross with five. Yes, everyone's got the same players now. Everyone's got the same team. Son with a disappointing one. He couldn't do uh, what he did against Palace that he did against Rochdale, weirdly, because Palace and Rochdale are the same level. And up front, Fermi, no, and Kane. So uh, a good couple of boys up front. <clears throat> Kane with a late goal, of course. Of course Kane with a late goal. Hard to predict old Kane this season. Um, so that's first and second sort. Now something magical has happened uh, this week in third place because we've got a three-way split. Yes, that's not your, your dad's internet search history. Um, <laughs> we've got a three-way split of two pounds between Richard Pestridge, Dominic Andrews, and Benjamin Rolfe. Um, ben has rather kindly offered to just let them split. Don't bother me. I'm sulking because I'm very good this year. Ben has kindly given up a penny 
So both Dominic and Richard can enjoy 67p whilst Ben um, writhes in agony on 66. But hey, let's take a look at those players that have uh, earned these guys their riches this week. Now Pest, Pest with Edison in goal. 15 points for Edison. Not only did he get all three bonus points. Not only did he play for 90 minutes. Yeah, that's a goalie. They all play. Not only did he keep a clean sheet. Four points. Not only did he make five saves. One point. Not only did he save a penalty. Five points. That's it. That's it. That's all he got. 15. Full name. Edison. Santana. De Marais. Mm, there you go. What a boy. 15. Made up for his uh, dodgy defence of Kenny Long Rudiger. Uh, 2-2-1. Two, two, uh, moving into midfield, we've got Stevens, 5. Eriksson, 6. Sterling did not play. Too cold. Uh, Ali got a 3. And then up front, the standard Wilson, Kane, Fermi. No. Combo. Kane, captured 12. Next. Um, Richard pushing his luck slightly. His bench... His bench is terrible. No one played. He's got Jones, who's quadraspaz on a life glove. Fernandinho, who's quadraspaz on a life glove. And Gomez, who... Selena Gomez, who didn't play... Um, playing a concert somewhere in Alabama or something. So that's Richard's team. 56. Well done, Richard. Every little helps. Very little. Very, very, very little. Now, on to Dominic. No show, Andrews. <coughs> Terrible defence from Dom. Uh, seven points between his goalie and three defenders. But again, Ericsson's there with six. Salah, Captain C20. A bit of the Ox. Oh, why are you always calling the Ox? Chamberlain with six. Um, up front, Vardy, Blanking, Aguero assist, Firmino eight. Lovely, lovely stuff. Well done, Dominic. 67p on its way to you. Uh, what else we got here, boy? Pest. No, we done pest. Sorry, a little bit tipsy. Like I say, did the first recording. Didn't fucking work, did it? Ben Roth. Now he's applied himself and stopped sulking. Oh, it's no good, so I'm just going to ruin it anyway. Uh, um, I clearly wasn't trying because I was making loads of transfers. Um, so he's pulled it back. Boop. <laughs> and his performances. Um, De Gea with four. Ake with four. Daniels unable to uh, recreate the magic of last season uh, with a zero. Captain Salah, 20. Uh, Emre Chan with 13. Star of the show there for Ben. What value, Emre Chan? I think 4.9 mil. Could be one to watch. But there's a lot of, lot of good Liverpool players. They'd be playing well, son. Um, what else we got? Benteke, questionable up front. Uh, Kane with six and Wilson with a blank. If only Benjamin had more faith in Davies at the Palace, he would have scooped all the money. But he didn't. As it was, Sterling came off and that prick Ward Prowse um, I don't know why, but I associate Ward Prowse with suck my two-inch prick. So Ward Prowse can suck my two-inch prick. He slipped into the side, but could only bring two points to the to the table. So uh, Rolfi, yeah, gets that share. 66 sweet pence going his way, straight in the purse. Let's see who finished last. I know who finished last. Joe Hamilton. Last season's Hamilton. <laughs> Joe Chamilton, uh, last season's champion, uh, finishes last with 34 points, finishing this week a game week rank with of 5,207,225. Um, with 34 points. Where it went wrong, pretty much everywhere. Lossel in goal two, Daniel zero, Zanka two, Rudiger one. Jesse Lingard scoops six points for Joe, um, but it's not. Um, I think Lingard's the sweet corn kernel on the uh, massive log of festering feces that represents Walcott, Son, and Mkhitaryan, managing just five between them. I think Joe's uh, performances this year are echoing his uh, beloved Arsenal's. Although, to be fair, 
He did captain Firmino, who got 16. Um, but unfortunately, Obinyaminyang, Obinyang, she bangs, she bangs. Obiang got zero because he missed a bloody penalty, negating his uh, 90 minutes played. Unfortunate, Joe. Very unfortunate, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Oxley chamberlain sat in third position on the bench with six points. That's got to hurt. That's got to hurt. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's have a little look, look at the fair play league where that leaves everyone. Um, Ed Scriver sits pretty up top with um, 1,670 points and also eight pounds in the black. Uh, Rob Daly just behind him on 1616, minus two um, pounds, that is. Uh, third place, Michael Gloney, just uh, 12 points behind Rob on uh, 1,604. And then it's everyone's favourite, Barry Holloway in fourth. On 1,574. Bit of a gap between him and Mike. 30 points, but it's all make up uh, Andrew Jolly sits behind Barry, as ever. Uh, three points behind. With Rob Starley uh, coming up his rear. Uh, 19 points behind him. Dave Lowe, 1499, dropping down the league. Uh, very keen to play all his cards. Uh, he might regret that in the latter stages of this year. Um, Chris Oliver behind him, just one point indeed, 1,498. Pestridge, after his uh, mammoth financial victory this week, uh, sits on 1,485, followed by Ed Jackson, 1,476, this week's Game Week winner. Dominic, another uh, 67p crew member, uh, on 1453, followed by Benjamin Robbins, the silent man of the group, on 1428. Thomas Moore is just three points behind Ben. Uh, Tom with only a shared third place uh, finish to his name, leaving him on minus 49 pounds so far this year. And Simon Aglone not far behind Tom, uh, it, or in front of Tom. Uh, on minus 47 points, uh, pounds, uh, 1347 points. Ben Rolf on 1311 um, finds himself now on the uh, rather round figure of minus 41 pounds 84. Um, with Robert Smith at second bottom, 1241. Although he has got two game week victories to his name from the early days, so he's on minus 30 quid. Rock bottom is Joe, 1229. Uh, just the solo second place for Joe. Uh, he's on minus 45 pounds. Um, not looking good for Joe. Not looking good at all. Um, I've been able, unable to really frisk the fixtures for you guys, uh, which you're probably all gutted about. My valuable insight no doubt helps you both on a gambling front and a dream team front. So why don't we have a little look through what have we got going on? Um, the 12.30 kickoff, a, a.k.a. the Acre Ruiner, is Burnley versus Everton. Um, Everton really uh, discovering the Big Sam big Sam effect that I personally enjoyed for so many years at West Ham. Um, they are absolutely appalling away from home at Everton. Um, and Burnley are decent, of course, managed by Satan. Um and Robert Saunders will uh, get to win the tree against Everton this week. Uh, I reckon 2-1. That would be a fair score. I can't see Everton doing much else than that. Um, moving up. Uh, an explosive fixture here. Leicester versus Bournemouth. Um, Leicester... These two have been a rocky old road for these two, really. Um, neither one putting together a decent run of form. Bournemouth had a little spell where they started scoring, but um, they're both a bit turd. Uh, I think Mares is probably still sulking a little bit, um, but I reckon Leicester will probably get a victory against Bournemouth. They were really missing Jermaine Defoe. Uh, so let's go for a foxy Leicester win. Uh, another two teams that are struggling for consistency and probably so boring it's hard to muster an opinion about them. It's uh, 
Southampton versus Stoke at the Old Dell. Uh, Southampton there's a danger of this fixture being called off. Uh, of course, the south of England plunged into a, a, an arctic vortex by the beast from the east. Um, but I reckon we're going to have a decent old Desmond Tutu here. And did I did I dream it or did Tadic score last week? Hmm. Hmm. No, Gabby Adini did. Uh, similar similar scoring records. Gabba Techno getting his first fucking goal for what seems like an eternity. Um, Spurs are uh, taking on Huddersfield up at uh, the old Wembley. Um, uh, I, I can't see anything else other than a 4-0, 4 0 Spurs victory here. Although they do take on the old lady uh, midweek. No, not Nicola, um, but uh, Juventus, of course. Um, so uh, maybe they're resting people. Maybe they're resting Kane. Uh, although Kane doesn't tend to, Kane needs to play because if he has too much of a rest, you know, it's after the stroke, uh, he really struggles to get moving again. Uh, he wears a copper band around his wrist to try and get those uh, those molecules uh, flowing around his blood system. Um, anyway, so I think a Spurs four 0 against Huddersfield. Um, meanwhile, over in Wales, uh, it's. The uh, mighty Swans versus the graceful Hammers. Um, West Ham have got a surprisingly good record in Wales and against Welsh teams in recent memory, anyway. Um, but we have just sold IU technology back to Swansea, so it's not too much of a thing to expect IU to score against us, possibly four goals. Um, but who knows? Maybe Big Ginge will smash, smash Swansea to bits on his own. A brace, maybe, for oh, Collins. I don't know, I'm just making this up. 3-0 uh, West Ham. Easy, easy victory. I've got the new kit on. I've seen the feeler one. Um, Dr. Martins, everyone's still wearing those, right? So, 3-0 West Ham. Um, mean, uh, and then back... Uh, across the pond, several ponds, no actual seas. Uh, Watford take on West Brom in possibly the worst show of football for a long time. Uh, Watford have been appalling, but West Brom under Pardew is it's laughable. It really is laughable. And I think West Brom are probably only the only team that look doomed. Uh, I think they're definitely going to go down. So uh, I would say Watford are going to win this 3-0 because I don't see where the goals are coming from West Brom. Uh, so there you go, hot tip for you guys. Um, then we move on to SNF, or as I like to call it, <sighs> Sniff. Uh, it's Liverpool versus Newcastle. Um, Liverpool who are looking lo bloody lovely at the moment. Um the big three of Mane, Firmino and Chile Sorsala are really, really kicking the shit out of everyone. And uh, Newcastle, <laughs> uh, what are the odds that Sky, is it Sky the evening? SNF is Sky, isn't it? What are the odds that uh, Sky show the footage of the two, four, three fixtures in the mid, what was that, noughties or late nineties? Uh, Stan Collymore reeling away. They build it up and build it up and build it up, but... No, I don't know. it just won't fulfil those fixtures. Um, so I'll probably go for 4-3 Liverpool. No, I won't. Um, I would say 5-0 Liverpool. Um, John Joe will be keen to impress against his former team, but will probably get sent off because he's mentally ill. Um, <clears throat> as we all wake up on Sunday and we see that the first fixture at 1.30 is Brighton versus Arsenal. What have Brighton got that Arsenal don't? Um, teamwork. Team spirit. Fight. Uh, they shoot. Uh, testosterone. Um, muscles. Uh, they're not a bunch of pricks. They put football before social media. 
they put football before hair gel. Uh, they haven't got an old woman managing them. That'll do for now. Um, I reckon Brighton are going to win like 3 0. That would be very funny. And I hope it happens. Sorry, Arsenal fans. You, but yeah, we've got to get rid of that old Burke, haven't we? It's embarrassing. That's what it is. It's like having a racist old nan. It's like, ah, oh, shut up, nan. Jesus Christ. And everyone's going, don't worry, she, she'll be dead soon. Oh, it's like, fucking hell. Got to put up that for another year. <clears throat> but you never know. It's 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 going to be a cold couple of days. Perhaps Arsenal will forget his uh, lovely jacket. And then on the afternoon, have we got a super Sunday in store for you? It's Manchester City versus Chelsea. Uh, Man City are out of this world at the moment. Um, I can't see anything but a 3 0 Man City win against Chelsea. Um, I don't think the Chelsea players have got the fight in them, and Man City is so fair at the moment. Um, Maybe I can see company getting injured and doing that dejected face. Uh, but that's all. That's the only downside for Man City, I think. And then we've got a Maneuf, uh Monday night football. Uh, we've got Crystal Palace versus Manchester United. And do you know what? I quite fancy Palace to win this. I think Palace will win 1-0. Call me mad. Call me crazy Baz. Um, insane Hoz, but uh, let's go for that. That's uh, that's definitely going to happen. Yeah. Good luck to Palace. And that is about it. Yeah. I think the first recording I did was funnier uh, and better, but at least this one fucking works. And what have you done today? Fuck all. So, I bid you adieu. <laughs>